Hi everyone, my name is Antoine, I'm an industrial engineer and I work at 3D Hubs as a CNC supply chain manager and I'm responsible of the CNC machining processes. And today I would like to talk to you about CNC machining specifically for aluminum and aluminum 6061. Why is it such a common material? What are the different surface finishes we offer? What are the best usage for it? And what is this not to be used for? I'll describe all the surface finishes we have here on the table and then explain a little bit to you what are the specificities of each one, uh, what kind of products or what kind of parts they're generally used for. So basically, aluminum 6061 is used in a very wide range of industries, uh, ranging probably from just regular mechanical prototyping uh, to maybe electronics industry, some more simple mechanical applications, uh, whether it be in aerospace, telecommunications, uh, you name it. Um, if I go maybe through the most common steps that an aluminum 6061 part might go through during the manufacturing process, um, let's say I don't have a billet here on my table, but what we start with is basically a block of aluminum that's been either cast or extruded. And then this billet of aluminum that will be slightly thicker will be machined in your CNC machine. Um, in order to obtain a first surface. So this is what you would call in the industry or how we call it here um, as machined. So basically if you can look, I don't know if you can see real well the reflections on it, but basically you've got all the little tool marks um, and these are the marks that are left by the machining tool. So as it is a subtractive technology, you're just gonna take away the material uh, with your CNC machining process, with your milling process actually, and this is all the marks that you're gonna see here. This is beautiful example of what as machine should look like, by the way. So as machine process, like all the primary surface finishes, so to say, um, is used mostly for parts where you don't really have a cosmetic application to it. Because um, of course, if you were to use this part in, the, in an end product, in a, in a finished product, um, maybe you would not want to see the machining marks. Uh, but if you're using maybe this prototype for uh, mechanical applications, you're gonna be fine with having the machining marks there because they just won't um, disturb the function of your part. Um, another sample part that our engineers designed and made, um, I, should knows, I should note all of these are sample parts, so uh, they're not IP sensitive, that's why I'm able to show it to you, uh, um, to show them to you today. This is another uh, little funny part that our engineers made. This is uh, made, I believe, with a combination of turn milling um, and just regular three axis milling. You can see all the machining parts here, um, flat milling, this is turn milling here done with probably a ball mill to do the, uh, the more complex surface here. Um, and yeah, you can see the slots that are probably a bit more complex. So you can already see that with this material, as, um, as it is quite a soft material, not too hard to machine, you are already able to do quite a wide range of geometries. Uh, you can do this, you can do three form surfaces as well. Um, and yeah, this is still in the as machined shape of it. Um, when you want a part that looks slightly more fancy, you can stay still in the world of as-machined finishes, but you can move to a finer as-machined state, which we call here the smooth machining um, surface finish. So basically it means that you still have the as-machined finish, you will still see all the tool marks on your part. You see here the lines on the side, uh, you can see here um, the lines that are actually quite enjoyable to see. I always love seeing how these parts are on a smooth machined part. Um, this part, I think, looks really beautiful. It would maybe not be used for a cosmetic application, uh, but you can still see that the machinist who programmed this part and who made this part probably took a lot of care in making sure that the tools would be sharp, um, that you know the chamfers would be really beautifully made, that there's no scratches on it. Um, this is really maybe for a mechanical part that needs very precise surfaces or that needs a very uh, low surface roughness. So you have typically a lower surface roughness on these parts compared to an as machine one. Uh, but you may still not be able to use that as a cosmetic uh, surface finish because let's say if this were an end product and you were to deliver it to your customer or use it to pitch an idea of part uh, to investors for instance, um, you would still see the machining marks which may not be ideal actually to present an end product. So then you would need to move towards what we call secondary surface finishes and that would be basically um, secondary surface finishes would mean you're going to apply another finishing, whether it be manual or chemical or mechanical uh, process to the already as machined part. So one of the very common ones that's used to remove all the machining marks is called bead blasting. 
So I don't know if you can see on this part here, this is a little um, satellite part that our engineers made as well. Um, pretty common three axis part, still made of aluminum. Um, you can see here that in bead blasting, we used basically little beads of steel that are, um, no, actually these are glass beads, sorry, that we used. Um, so basically on, on bead blasting, you take, um, you take a glass media that are tiny balls, tiny beads that you shoot at really high speed and pressure on the parts. This is going to create a slightly grainy surface on your part. And this will in effect remove almost all the machining marks. Not all of them, but close to all of them. So in case you need a part that's non-reflective, let's say if you have something with light inside, or uh, if you have something that you, know, you don't want to reflect light inside of your system, or if you want just a very consistent, smooth appearance, uh, this is one of the first things you can choose. Um, yeah, so this is bead blasting. Uh, I should note that at this stage, the parts are still prone to staining, and they probably you would probably not be able to use them in an environment where there is oil, or where there's lubricants, or let's say in outside conditions, because at this stage, the aluminum is still in its raw, unprotected stage, and is thus uh, subject to corrosion. Um, which is then, how do you solve this, and how do you get to another, even more uh, sturdy surface finish that is, um, how to say that can withstand uh, more complex applications or end usages. And that is when generally, most typically with aluminum, you would move towards anodizing. And what is anodizing? Basically, with anodizing, you have an aluminum part that has been machined, that has been then um, run through a secondary uh, finishing process in order to remove the machine marks. Uh, it can be, as I said previously, bead blasting, you could use also sanding, you could use also chemical polishing, chemical etching, which is a step that is sometimes used after the cleaning stages before running it into the anodizing baths. And you get to uh, put it in an, um, uh, I think it's called a chemical conversion, I'm trying to see what uh, anodizing technically is, but basically you will convert a thin layer of material on the outside layer of your material into a protective layer. Um, as it happens, uh, as opposed to steel, let's say, if you were to let a piece of steel corrode, uh, it would transform into rust, basically. It would have ferrous oxide on the outside layer of the part. This is unfortunately not a, uh, a good uh, layer because rust or ferrous oxide does not have good mechanical properties. It is very weak. And you can notice if you have a, a steel part that is rusty, it gets really weak. As it turns out with aluminum, and that's why it's so great, when aluminum oxidizes, or gets oxidized, um, the layer of oxide that forms is actually protective. So this is why it's really amazing to have this property on aluminum, because you can actually artificially force the aluminum to create this layer of oxidation. And that's what happens with anodizing, which is a method that is used on a lot of end parts that you may find in the electronics consumer industry, for instance. This is an old keyboard that we took apart for uh, the needs of this video. Um, you can also see a notebook here that is made out of aluminum, uh, um, anodized aluminum. Uh, and I guess these are parts that you would see in your everyday life um, on, uh, on, the, um, on customer facing products. Um, basically, you are, uh, uh, you are faced with parts that have a good chemical resistance, good um, uh, chemical corrosion resistance, because this layer uh, not only is, um, is, you know, is chemically resistant, it is also mechanically resistant and can resist a uh, wide var var variety. Um, yeah, I can't use this word. <laughs> it can withstand a wide var variety of, um, of aggressions from the uh, outside environment, as opposed to your as machine part, which if you were to let it outside in a non-protected or unoiled environment, might get damaged after a while. So um, a little something else that I um, wanted to come back on is maybe the difference between a uh, raw aluminum part and an anodized aluminum part. Um, you might not be able to see this on your screen, but the ones I showed you were all gray. Um, because the anodized in its natural state comes in gray color, which means untinted or uh, undyed stage. Um, but you are able, of course, to dye it or to um, add color onto the anodizing layer before you seal it. Uh, but I'm probably gonna show you in a later video what these different colors look like, etc. But in the meantime, I just thought I'd show you on one part the difference between the anodized layer and the raw aluminum layer. So I took an old, um, scrap part that we had here uh, at the QC department and I just 
cut it in half with a saw. It didn't do this in a milling machine, so it looks pretty rough, but I thought it would still give you an idea. The top layer of the part is anodized here. So this part has been chemically etched after having very fine passes of milling, which is probably almost the same as this finish. After chemically etching it in the first stages of the anodizing, you can see that then the surface was really smooth. And when the anodizing uh, process was, um, when the part was ran through the process of anodizing, it really made it smooth and, and um, yeah, and slightly glossy. Um, but then if I turn the part and you look at the cut, you can see actually how different it looks compared to the raw aluminum. I don't know if you can see the cut well here. So basically here, you still have the raw aluminum that um, that we just cut probably 20 minutes ago. So it is still very shiny. Uh, there's no corrosion at all on it. So it's still very bright. But as I let it um, in ambient air, if I let this go for a couple days, weeks, or even put it outside, it's gonna become very dull. And there's gonna be already a layer of oxidation that forms naturally in it. But this layer of oxidation is not gonna be as resistant as this one that we artificially created in order to be like super resistant. Um, this is, this adds actually, if you take the nominal surface, this will add a couple microns on top of the nominal layer and below uh, the layer. Because as I said previously, it converts a certain quantity of aluminum on the surface. It does not add anything um, onto the anodized layer. So it converts, it converts a small layer of the uh, aluminum part and then transforms it into an aluminum oxide layer. Um, yeah. So if I had to summarize it, whether you would like to do a mechanical part with no big cosmetic requirements or whether you'd like to do um, a consumer and product basically that would go out to one of your customers and that has high cosmetic requirements, um, I hope I conveyed well the idea that with Aluminum 6061 you have a very wide ver variety of options available to you. Um, if you'd like, of course, to check out what um, what that could be like for your project, uh, remember that you can always check out the first or services page for a more detailed description of all the surface finishes we offer on Aluminum. Uh, you can also, of course, and I would really recommend that if you already have a design, you can upload your parts uh, on our quote portal to get a free quote. And um, yeah, I would really recommend you just uploading the part on there, testing out the different surface finishes available to you, uh, see what kind of prices and lead time uh, you can get for uh, these different options and then uh, hopefully move into production to get your parts in hand.